Welcome to Slice of PI, where we make quick hot takes on the news whenever we feel like it. I'm your host, Matt, as usual, and with me is my co-host with a premium subscription to War Porn Board. <laughs> <laughs> What the hell? <laughs> okay, that's, 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 a, that's a surprise. We have PNO, PN nothing lahat, boards here at your service. Yes, and the, speaking of war porn, and well, no disrespect, we have a very, very meaty topic today, and it's kind of exploded in the past month, although things quieted down since. <laughs> uh, yeah. Explosions. <laughs> it's something you enjoy. Explosions. You know, a lot of explosions, a lot of rockets, a lot of fireworks. And of course, we're talking about the Gaza conflict between Israel mm. and Palestine. Mm. And I think it all started when all of a sudden <clears throat> a few households were evicted in Israel from a neighborhood. And so mm. uh, Hamas and the Palestinians rallied behind it because of, of course, a long history and record of being abused by the state of Israel. Now they have retaliated by firing numerous rockets into the mm. uh, into Israel residential areas. And it to the point of mm. you know overwhelming the defense system and the you know hitting a few civilians uh, and it's caused a a lot of reactions across the international community including the Philippines and while mm. we are not experts in international relations we do have insights on that but the focus on this one is why do Filipinos care so much about the Israel and Palestinian uh, conflict right now. Uh, mm. Have you seen any reactions yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, right yeah, now yeah. about that? Yeah, yeah. What do you think about it? I've, I've seen the reaction, of course. Uh, well, as far as social media is concerned, well, you have people keeping track of the casualties on both sides. And uh, again, there are some who appeal to numbers as a measurement of who suffered most to legitimize certain claims. And again, Palestinians to an extent suffered more. But they, they, this mm. is a very long conflict. And I it's it's a very complex topic, and again, our focus is on people's reactions to it. So, mm-hmm. so we have uh, progressive Filipinos, I think, siding with Palestine, while you have relatively more conservative sectors of our society siding with Israel. So, hmm. yeah, uh, it's, in fact, uh, I think a colleague of ours, uh, <clears throat> Professor Contreras, said it's a litmus test for mm. the political values or political orientations of Filipinos, as what you've said. Mm. And the thing is. Uh, the, the justifications for this is quite kind of interesting. And mm. I think there have been several um, thought pieces, opinion pieces in Rappler. Mm. Uh, I think one by Kyle Perado <clears throat> said that. Uh, I think another one. I can, um, we'll link that to the description below. But it appeals mm. to the fact that Palestinians are oppressed. You know, mm. They're an oppressed minority, particularly by the overwhelming Mm. The overwhelming power of Israel, which is one of the most technologically advanced militaries in the world. Mm. And and on the other side, you have conservatives because, for one thing, Israel is, at least uh, among Americans, they consider Israel as an ally Mm. because it is a democracy in the Middle Mm. East. And for us, you know, if you're aware of Philippine history, we do have close ties with Israel, you know. Um, We Mm. voted for their statehood years ago. And even... Far out claims talking about <laughs> biblical terms as Christians and as Catholics, <laughs> we must defend the Holy Land. Uh, and, uh, and so, what do you think yeah, about these reactions? I think we need to. I, I, I'm going to add on to Sir Ton's uh, comment regarding a litmus test for political tendencies, and I think this is just basic litmus test on basic political knowledge. <laughs> I, I, I think we. I, there's a tendency to overcomplicate our understanding of how Filipinos react to it. I think, bottom line, we just confuse Israel with the biblical one, and we confuse Palestine right now with the Philistines. So it's it's that's how bleak my perspective on this matter is. I think we just we're just confused, and along with that confusion, we attribute we attach so much to it. But it's just based on that basic confusion, at least for the pro-Israel side. But you know. One thing that I personally observed and what personally bothers me when I had uh, when I look at the conversation online is that ve- while there are two sides of this conflict, more people easily and unabashedly side with Palestine and it, for things like, for instance, them as an oppressed people. And I think a lot of people, especially progressives or maybe, you know, people in the social media in general, mm. like empathize with the plight of an oppressed people and that 
the fact, and the, they don't side with Israel at all. And even when, for instance, I do have friends in Israel, and I actually sometimes showed a bit of uh, solidarity with them. I mean, regardless of which side, you know, both sides, it, it, uh, both sides' are losses are terrible, you know, and they're both there are civilians lost in both sides, and that's one thing that is obviously I think everyone can hear that's unfortunate. Uh, but the fact that you know when I did that, there were people that attacked me for it, you know, on upon instinct. Of course, we're okay now, you know, but on instinct, it's such an emotional, deep reaction that mm. they it made them, you know. It was such an emotional reaction that they forgot that it wasn't propaganda. That was prop news propaganda, but it was actually just a friend who compiled um, rocket alerts in her old neighborhood, you know, where her friends remember. And it's like, you, oh, they may be have the upper hand. They may be more powerful, but lo a loss for their side is still bad. It's still a human loss. So what do you think about this? How you say the siding with the oppressed and how you know i mean, of course my side is a bit i i don't like the uh, the argument that oppressed people are always right you know so what do you think about this if you side with the oppressed make sure that you're siding with the oppressed and not the oppressed under a state and and mm -hmm. i think that's 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 my take on it uh, i i'm not really putting much brain cells on this conflict because i think the issue is at the very core, relatively simple. Everything mm -hmm. is about state building. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you're right. We, we need to side with the oppressed. But if we subject that act of siding with the oppressed under the discourse of the state, it mm -hmm. would always be pro or against. It would always be mm -hmm. this side against the other. Right? And you just pit right. one oppressed people with another supposedly oppressed people. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> so yeah. Uh, there is a different angle to this one that no one would admit and that is mm -hmm. this is basically the costs of state building maybe mm -hmm. the state building of israel or the state building of palestine mm. so as long as we remain in this hamster wheel of suffering yeah or sisyphus hill <laughs> yeah uh it would always be a guttural reaction that would more or less stop any anyone as taking sides on mm -hmm. this matter because it becomes like a measurement of oppression. It's mm. a very, it's a process that I personally disagree with because technically everyone at some point was quote unquote oppressed or experienced pain. Mm. Now, of course, um, I would have sided for Israel <clears throat> Palestine as well if they weren't being represented by terrorists. But of course, people are saying that, that oh, that's a media tactic. But really, they do have a manifesto constitution and they are outright for the elimination of the mm. other you know, mm -hmm. of of Israel genocide. They have expressed genocide and tendency. So for me, that's a no no. No matter mm -hmm. how oppressed the people you're fighting for are, you are no freedom fighter if you're trying to commit genocide on and, the other uh, side. And th that's the thing. If if you could observe how you stated that, you, you're you're reluctant to side with Palestine, and mm -hmm. that's already yeah. being or staying within the discourse of the state. <clears throat> right. I, I uh, personally, I would side with anyone who is oppressed. Regardless mm. of what on God's name you are, that's mm. one thing. Because to side with the oppressed, you need not mention a state mm. as a, an umbrella to, the, to that oppressed. And as far as I'm concerned, okay, this allows right. us to look at the state Ye as the cause of such oppression. Yeah, but then again, the fact that you said this, you're right in the, in the sense that states are based on the, the, like, on the suffering of people, you know. And the thing is, yeah, um, it's at this point you can't tell whether what one begins and where it ends because you may be representing this um, and fighting to avenge the suffering of your people, but you're also causing the suffering of other people. You know, of course, I mean, the loss of life is different, but there's also psychological damage. The fact that uh, rockets are firing ahead again, I'm starting to sound like on the other side here, so my biases are showing, mm. but uh, it's it, it's. Ne I, I, it's never a good thing to be on the basis. In fact, um, it's 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 an it's it's a calculus that I would mm. rather not get in involved in because um, it's it's. Anyway. But it, it, it is uh, a calculus that you cannot avoid because you are speaking within the discourse of the state. There would always be a calculus to suffering in mm -hmm. the discourse of the state. The question of who suffered most is essential to the building of a state. Maybe Israel or Palestine. 
and uh, mm. you know th- that's one thing uh yes you you're right you, you cannot support people fighting against oppression when that act of fighting causes suffering so no one wins mm. uh, do you agree with that one mm. but it's it's a different uh, mm. it's it's different from fighting against oppression because fighting against oppression you need to spare none mm. regarding who causes the oppression itself and as far as i'm concerned mm. it's the state states state institutions cause oppression as they must mm. be the primary target of, if you want to actually fight for oppression rather than avenge there's a there's a, there's a difference between avenging uh, people right. uh, your suffering from fighting against oppression there's there's a distinction between the, between those two but yeah so yeah mm. now <clears throat> Well, I think I, I lost a bit there, mm. but the thing is, um, I think that's that's another point I want to talk about, and that mm. is um, when people, the, 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 when you deal with oppression, of course, you're filled with a gut re- an emotional reaction, mm. and I think I understand that a lot of Filipinos side with uh, Palestine because there is a uh, a new solidarity mm. and compassion with those because the, we are oppressed here right now. Mm-hmm. in this context so i understand that it's a release of catharsis you know uh and um, but the thing is when uh, it, it suspends uh, a process of thinking you know of course mm. you you should you should be against oppression mm. but in a way you still have to think about oppression to separate what is uh what is uh where the source of the oppression and what is not you know mm. at one you're right in saying that there's a difference between avenging and fighting oppression, you know. Mm. There's an ethical way to fight oppression and there's an unethical way of fighting oppression. So where do, in order for us to judge that, we have to think. And mm. the discourse on oppression suspends that. Once you say, I api yan. And the thing is, in general, morally, of course, you should fight on behalf of the oppressed. But you have to think, are they really oppressed? And does oppression give them people the right to commit terrorism mm. or commit genocide is there a need to fight like, on behalf of the oppressed is there a need to represent the oppressed or is, is or we can just go directly at the causes and just say that we are fighting against the roots of oppression because right. this this notion of on behalf is to an extent also yeah. one <laughs> one Pro- cause of perpetuated oppression because you have right. two sides fighting on behalf of the oppre- mm-hmm. on, on the of, of the oppressed and more or less co- causing the perpetuation of things so yeah that's the, the discourse the discussion how people think about oppression is all it's it's difficult to un- disentangle really because at the end of the day mm-hmm. uh, we are vindictive creatures mm-hmm. humans are vindictive creatures mm-hmm. and it's yeah. easy to it's easy to cover up such vindictiveness by claims of fighting on behalf of the oppressed right. Because those rockets are aimed not at, quote unquote, this abstract view of oppression, but on civilians, on mm. residents. And that is something that should not happen. At the same time, let's not forget, let's just balance it out, that the, the IDF, Israeli Defense Forces, have also committed atrocities on their side, like raping and pillaging and driving people out, etc. cetera. Uh, that is also un- uncalled for and heinous. And I, th- I think that's opposed, that's the difference in what, uh, between uh, Hamas and IDF, at least the IDF, there as an army, they can be held accountable by their own institutions or even international institutions. They can, but you can. <laughs> can <laughs> it's an all-powerful entity in the state of Israel. Mm, well, and I, I think that's that all armies subject to you know try, trial. Aren't they tried for uh, for crimes against humanity according to the Geneva Convention, things like that? All armies, are army, capable of, all armies are of course, capable of oppression. Of course they are. Of course they are. And they should be. But is it Hamas's job to uh, establish justice or can we leave it to the institutions? Hmm. That's an international issue really at this point. But yeah. I'm just citing a basic fact, which is all armies mm. are capable of oppression. <laughs> uh, 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 of course. Of course. Uh, anyway, all armies are all armies have committed war crimes. But the point is that like, this erupted uh, at the time where, come to think of it, is it just an everyday part of like the conflict? It's just 
or if you look at it in context, it's a part of it's during the time of elections, really. Mm. So is it or quote unquote organic eruption of a conflict? Because if you look at in both countries, both countries are, are doing elections, and um, yeah, this might have be a part of that calculus. But um, I think we're we have to tie this back to how, what the Filipinos have to do with this. So what is there anything to be gained from looking at this? Like, of course, we said that this is a expression of catharsis for, out of oppression mm. or even solidarity one way or another with Israel, who has been our traditional partner, but also our relationship with as oppressed people with Palestine. So mm. is there anything, anything of value of this exercise of commenting and debating and joining uh, in the international commentary? Hmm. Part of me would say none. As far as I'm concerned, we're paying the cost of being distracted from our own problems. Mm. But, uh, okay, I'll be a bit more generous. I'll be a bit more generous. Probably we can uh, harness our own sense of empathy as a society to look at and uh, sympathize with the oppressed mm. so on and so forth. But, right. uh, you know, deep inside, I just believe that uh, we're not gaining anything from this one. We're losing attention span as far as I'm concerned. It's a great distraction. We have more mm. problems here in the You're Philippines. Right. Mm -hmm. What about you? Yeah. Do we have what, what else do we have to gain from this? Uh, in a similar way, well, for one thing, uh, I, d I don't think it should be ignored. I do think mm. that it is possible for us to give too much attention to this, which mm. is I, at least at this moment, there's a ceasefire, so people have calmed down over it. Right now, the fact that this war is still going on in the 21st century, and it's something that's very old, means that it's, I think it's important to reflect on it, the mm. fact that how wars, conflicts can persist. Mm. And it is, I think it is, a, it is an integral part. How can we avoid it? How can we solve it? In our own, it's, it's similar to my attitude towards looking at American politics. We <clears> can't <throat> ignore it, but and there's something we can learn from it, but at the same way, you can't be over obsessed with it. You know, it's not again, it's not our war. Yeah, remember so what learning is not so, really part of the process of being a chismoso. <laughs> mm. I think we should make a bigger episode on the Ususero politics. <laughs> But I honestly, I think uh, what I, at least what I think is, I think that uh, it gives me more insight as to towards our attitudes towards uh, oppression mm. and people and, and mm. states and, mm. you know, they, like Israel. Mm. Like some people believe that it's just punishing Israel for being able to build a state in the first place, despite them being oppressed for the previous century. Uh, so you said you were on the side of the oppressed. Now, who are the who are being oppressed, in your opinion? The oppressed, are those who whose family members, whose friends got killed, those who got killed, those who are dis displaced, those who are currently refugees right now, everyone who suffered under this conflict. Simple as that. Those are the oppressed. I noticed you were avoiding saying maybe uh, Palestine or Israel or maybe even from both sides, you know? Why didn't you say that? Yeah, that, uh, I think, does it matter really? That, uh, that's one thing. It only matters if you stay within this discourse of states or nation mm. states. But you know, for me, from my perspective, they are suffering. Simple as that. And mm. any, right. any, any means to complicate suffering is reflective mm. of ideological or economic interests. I can admit both mm -hmm. if you want. I can admit from both Israel and Palestine just to make it a bit more specific. But generally, mm -hmm. it's just those who are suffering. I am on their side. Hmm. I think that's one thing we can both agree on. You know, I think because most people, the problem is a, a lot of the, the narrative talks about the oppressor and the oppressed. And of course, calling someone an oppressor kind of holds them accountable, but you can't, the, some people conflate that to e include the citizens, you know, that mm. or even just because, for example, Israelis, you know, some people, they want to eliminate them, but it's really the IDF that's doing the crimes against Palestinians. Mm. It's not really the citizens, you know. So I suppose we should stop people from uh, suffering, you know. We should stop the suffering, uh, regardless of sides. And we should forget the, the, the nationality or the... Um, 
skin color or whatever, you know, from this side. I think the suffering should stop. Uh, and I think uh, that's the root cause of this is about, about nationhood, you know, and a, a mm. kind of na a na national narrative. And usually it's between two nation na national narratives mm. that kind of hinge on the elimination of the other. It's only for the Jews. It's only for the Palestinians. One mm. has to limit on the other. Is there a way to reconcile that maybe a bit more inclusive, you know, in such a way? Yeah, well, as long as it remains within that discourse, there's no way. But internationally, mm. probably, yeah, we can. Re there's a possible revival of the old plan to declare the entire area as an international zone. Uh, that's mm. one way to deal with it. But as right. long as we remain within the narrative of state, state security, state building, eh, eh, suffering will just be a component. You know, that's one thing. Whenever someone deploys oppression and suffering, you must mm. look at what are the ideas behind it. Because it's usually, mm. whenever you try to complicate suffering, it's usually for the sake of ideological, economic, political right. ends. So, mm. right. but yeah. I mean, no one is for suffering, you know, but, you know, it, when someone highlights one people suffering over the other, you know, that's mm. when debates emerge. And I think it's something that we kind of need to transcend in a way. I mean, yes, yeah. we need to identify who and hold people accountable, but we need to also remember that every like more people suffer regardless of side than regardless mm. of na nationhood. In fact, I, I, one thing we can look into is that either eliminating nation like that that altogether, or perhaps a, an idea of nationhood that is not hinged on uh, the supremacy of one people, but perhaps mm. the inclusion of many. Perhaps mm. a binational solution. Hmm. where they both recognize each other, you know? Or maybe it, the simplest thing is if Israel granted citizenship to uh, Palestine, that would be fine. And they'd be treated as equals, but that's not the case. Or if Palestine simply just got rid of Hamas and uh, just hmm. learned resume to, talks. <clears throat> yeah, resume talks, then that would be great. But, you know, both people are responsible for the conflict here and, uh, and hmm. both have a history of being perpetrators. So... I don't know why one people are one side or another. For me, it's mm. not easy. You know, I, I, I may I may sound pro-Israel, but I I would not side or agree with their arguments. You know, I mm. just don't like the oppression calculus of the Palestinians. But of course, my heart is goes out to them. Of course, their suffering is immeasurably more. But that doesn't mean that mm. they they should exclude Israel Israeli citizens from the solution. In a way, they should. Everyone should be included in the solution. Mm. So yeah. Yeah, Anything you know, just, just to add to what Sir Ton said earlier, I think it's not only about the measurement of ideological tendencies. This conflict is a litmus test for how vindictive human beings are. And I'm not mm. referring to those who in the conflict. I'm referring to the spectators. <laughs> yeah. The spectators, they, e they can easily take sides on this one. Mm -hmm. they, they don't want to take a third side or transcend right. because we are vindictive by nature. Mm. That's I mean, uh, one thing. Yeah. Like we just like to, enjoy, it's, it's cruel to say, but Filipinos, we have nothing to do with this, but in a way, <laughs> are you saying we're enjoying the show or the, uh, discussing? Because I don't enjoy this at all, but maybe uh, some Filipinos do commenting on this. Enjoy the show. Enjoy need not be happy, but you are so deep into it that you feel yeah, yourself as a part show. of it. Yeah, yeah. You're, cons you're consumed by the show. If you mm. mean that one, yeah, we're probably enjoying this one or some parts of us. So in in some sense, there are things to learn, but this show is not just a show. There are people really dying. And if ever we need side something, we need the side that is inclusive and for uh, uh, and stopping it right away. And not hmm. one side winning, but... Just stopping know, it. Both, just stopping it. Just stopping yeah, the, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's simple, simple as that. As I, as I said earlier, suffering is simple. The solution to mm. it is simple. Anything anything that complicates this is just nonsense. <laughs> mm, right. <laughs> so uh, that is it for the slice of PI. Join us again. Uh, we'll be having uh, a new episode soon for our mm. Independence Day special. But until then, Magadang gabi, mga PI.